Hello and thank you for joining me for this pre-reading video for the Certificate 4 in Training and Assessment here at MSA Training and Professional Development. Today we're going to be looking at training.gov.au which you can access by typing in training.gov.au to your URL bar at the top of your web browser and clicking enter. From here we will then move on to the National Register of VET or Vocational Education and Training continue to training.gov.au. Now this website is used by a lot of different RTOs or registered training organisations to gain information on the different training packages that are available to them, the qualifications within those training packages, the units of competency within those qualifications, and the further information on different skill sets and accredited courses. So on this homepage here, we can see the latest training.gov.au news. We can look at all the different resources that are available to us, and we can look at some frequently asked questions. But what we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be looking at the search function to be able to search for different training packages and qualifications and we're going to start off by searching for the business services training package which has a unit code BSB. If we type that in and then click enter that will search for the training package business services training package and these are the results that we will get. Now because we search for the business services training package this is the top result that we got. Now within this training package we have a range of different options. We have 66 different qualifications. We have six different accredited courses. We have 649 units of competency, and we have 58 different skill sets. Well, let's have a little bit of a look further in regards to this training package by simply clicking on the BSB code on the left here to access all the details in regards to this training package. As we can see, the code is BSB. It is called the Business Services Training Package, and it is release number five. We can see all the different releases that have been available for this training package, starting from its inception on the 6th of March 2015, all the way up to its current version that we are utilising now, which was um, endorsed on the 5th of June 2019. If we go down a little bit further, we can have a look at the different qualifications that are involved within this training package. A little bit further down, we can have a look at the different skill sets that are within this training package, and all the different units of competency that are within this training package. We'll get into skill sets later, but let's first of all have a talk and have a look at different qualifications. So qualifications are based on the Australian Qualification Framework, which states what level a qualification should be at. So a Certificate Level 1 qualification is at the AQF Level 1. A Certificate Level 2 qualification is at the AQF Level 2. A Certificate Level 3 qualification is at the AQF Level 3. Certificate Level 4 is at the AQF Level 4. Diploma is at the AQF Level 5, Advanced Diploma is at the AQF Level 6, and Graduate Certificate and Graduate Diploma are at the AQF Level 8. You can tell what AQF level a qualification is at by the very first number that is behind the actual um, training package code. Uh, so having a look at the Diploma level here, we have the Diploma of Business. The code for this qualification is BSB5, so we know it's at the AQF Level 5, 0215. Let's start off by dissecting an actual qualification now and seeing how a RTO or registered training organisation can actually package this qualification based on the packaging rules. So let's click on BSB 20115 Certificate 2 in Business to learn a little bit more about this qualification and the units of competency that make it up. So again we have the actual unit code for this qualification, we have the name and the current release which is release 2. We can see the training packages that include this qualification, which is BSB Business Services Training Package. The qualification um, that we're looking at currently resides within this training package. We have the different units of competency that are involved within this qualification. Now, there are a range of different units of competency. It comes down to each individual RTO to set what electives it would like its cohort to undertake based on their training needs. We have the different classifications and the modification history from the first version to the current version. And then we have a description of this qualification, which basically describes the outcome that someone would basically hold once completing this qualification. What their knowledge would be and what their performance requirements would be based on any given role or industry. So if we have a quick look over this qualification description, the qualification description for the Certificate 2 in Business states that this qualification reflects the role of individuals in a variety of junior administrative positions who perform a range of mainly routine tasks using limited practical, practical skills and fundamental operational knowledge in a defined context. Individuals in these roles generally work under direct supervision. 
So again, it's a description of the outcomes of this qualification. We then have the entry requirements. Now there are no formal entry requirements for this qualification. However, you will learn later on throughout your training that there are some prerequisites that some qualifications do request that you hold. For example, before moving on to a diploma, you may have to undertake a certificate level three or certificate level four first. More about that will be discussed during your training with us. Let's now move on to the packaging rules. And this is how an RTO packages together their qualification. Now within these packaging rules, we state that there are 12 units of competency that must be completed for this qualification to be achieved. There is one core unit that is mandatory that every RTO must offer their students when undertaking this qualification. And the core unit for the certificate two in business is BSB WHS 201, contribute to health and safety of self and others. So this is the mandatory unit that must be completed within this qualification. We then have 11 elective units that any RTO or training institution may choose from to package together for this qualification. So if we have a look down here underneath the core units, we have a range of elective units. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 elective units that we may choose from. Now if we have a look up here, we are only required to choose 11 elective units. So let's have a look over these elective unit rules. So seven elective units must be from this list below. So we have to choose seven of these 15 electives to make up our 11 elective units as part of this qualification. So seven must be from the list below. Four elective units may be selected from the elective list below or any currently endorsed training package or accredited course at the same qualification level. If not listed below, two of the four elective units may be selected from either a certificate one or certificate free level qualification. So these are the options that an RTO has when designing their qualification for the electives that they may pick for within this actual qualification. So with the certificate two in business, now let's now have a look at some of the actual units of competency. Now let's choose one of the units of competency here, BSB CUS 201, deliver a service to customers. So when we click on this code, it comes up with the unit of competency details. We can see again that it is current. It is the only version that has been released so far and is still current. We can see the different accredited courses that have this unit in their completion mapping. We have the different training packages that include this unit. And we have the different qualifications that include this unit. Again, we're looking at the certificate two in business and this uh, unit of competency is within this qualification. If we have a look down, we can see the unit of competency details. Now you can actually download these details via a Word document or a PDF document if you would like. Otherwise, you can just view them currently on this web page here. So when we have a look down at the unit of competency details, we have the application. Now the application is basically a summary of this unit, what you're expected to achieve upon completion of this unit. We then have the unit sector. So what sector of employment is this unit related to? And this sector of employment is related to the stakeholder relations, customer services sector. A little bit further down, we have the elements and performance criteria of this unit. The elements basically state the outcomes, what you need to achieve to achieve success in this qualification. We then have your performance criteria, so basically how you achieve success. So this is what you need to achieve success in this unit is your element, and your performance criteria is how you achieve success in this unit. We then move down to the foundation skills. Now foundation skills are your generic work skills that are required for this unit of competency. You'll learn more about foundation skills throughout your training with us here at MSA Training and Professional Development. Um, but they're just basically generic skills that are required to complete this unit and to be basically employed within this sector. We then have a look down at the unit mapping information, links to different compendium volumes, and then we finally end on the assessment requirements. So the assessment requirements, we have two different areas. We have performance evidence and knowledge evidence. These are all in regards into the actual evidence requirements. So the performance evidence requirements is proof you can do something. So you need to be able to be able to prove that you can greet customer and establish rapport relationships in accordance with organizational requirements for this unit of competency, identify customer needs using appropriate interpersonal skills, and so on. So these are the things that you need to be able to do and prove to obviously obtain the pass mark for this qualification and for this unit of competency. We then move on to the knowledge evidence. Your knowledge evidence is what you need to know and understand in regards to this unit of competency. 
Think of it as the theory behind the practical. So your knowledge is the theory, the things that you need to know and understand. Your performance evidence is the practical things that you need to be able to show competence in. We then have the assessment conditions. So these are the conditions in which the assessments must be delivered for this unit of competency within the qualification certificate two in business. So let's take a step back again and go back and have a look at the qualification which this unit of competency is a part of. So now we're back at the actual qualification details where we just looked over the different units of competency that need to be packaged together for this qualification and we did just have a look at one of those units of competency. So let's take a step back again further and go back to the actual training package. Now what we're going to look at now is we're going to look at different skill sets. Now what skill sets are, they are smaller than a qualification but bigger than a single unit of competency. This is for particular training for an area where someone might need to just undertake particular training in regards to basic customer engagement skills but doesn't want to actually undertake the whole qualification uh, in customer service for example. So let's have a look at a little bit more information in regards to this skill set, basic customer engagement skill set with the code BSB SS for skill set 00034. Again, it comes up with all the details in regards to the skill set, the code, the name, and the release. We can see that it has had free um, modifications to its current modification that was released on the 27th of September, 2018. It is part of the BSB training package, and these are the units of competency that make up the skill set. We have the different modification history. We have a description of the skill set, which is a skill set is designed for persons who are seeking to enter the industry and require basic operator skills or are working in a customer engagement center and require recognition of their current skills. We have the different pathways information, licensing and regulatory information, and the skill set requirements. So with the qualification that we looked at before, Certificate 2 in Business, we had the 12 uh, units of competency that needed to be completed. To be able to complete the skill set, there are only four units of competency that need to be completed. So that is how a skill set differs from a qualification. We go back to the training package again, we can see all the information that we've just previously gone over in regards to qualifications, the different levels that they are at, and the different skill sets and how they differ from a qualification. But I did mention one previous thing before that was an accredited course. Now, accredited course differs from a qualification or a skill set in that it's an area where an organization or a governing body has come together and wanted to design an accredited course that people can undertake to learn skills in a specific area that aren't related to a specific unit of competency. Now what I'm going to show you is basically a search result for an accredited course within the asthma area because I do know that there are a range of accredited courses out there for people to be able to understand asthma and the different, um, I guess, components that relate to asthma and what you would need to do as someone that would be basically be handling asthmatic um, issues within the workplace. Um, so let's have a look at the actual accredited courses for asthma here. We have a range of different accredited courses. Now, unfortunately, only two are still current. So what we're going to look at is we're going to have a look at Course in Asthma Awareness with the code 10760NAT. So it is a nationally accredited course. Now, you will not get a certificate level qualification upon completing this course. You will just gain basic uh, knowledge in regards to the description here. So the description, graduates of course in asthma awareness will be able to identify signs and symptoms of an asthma flare-up, assist a person experiencing an asthma flare-up, provide emergency first aid to a person experiencing a severe or life-threatening asthma attack using a metered dose inhaler and spacer device, and identify asthma triggers and identify strategies to minimize contact with them. So this is how it kind of differs from a qualification and a skill set, which all contain units of competency these contain information on a specific subject that aren't related to a unit of competency. Now, how an accredited course is created is again, an organization or a governing body will go to their qualification register. Here in Victoria, we have the VRQA, which stands for the Victorian Registration of Qualifications Authority to get this accredited course basically signed off on and put on training.gov.au then for RTOs to basically be able to deliver this qualification or this course. So again, you don't get a specific qualification at the end, you just undertake a course that gives you the knowledge and performance requirements for basically how to deal with a specific area, in this case, asthma. 
Now you will find further information in regards to this throughout your training here, and this was just a brief overview of training.gov.au, but it's very important for any trainer and assessor to be able to know how to utilize and how to use this website. And I hope I've been able to give you that information today. Thank you again, and thank you for joining us for this pre-reading video.